welcome back to my channel today we are going to dive into Photoshop on the iPad here in just a moment I'm gonna show you how to use clipping mask effects on the iPad but first if you guys like these Photoshop videos go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already we have just surpassed 300 subscribers so thank you guys so much I really appreciate it that is awesome I'm hoping to get to 500 before the end of the year so I'm pretty sure we're gonna hit that so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already also if you guys missed it I did start a Patreon Patreon. I have a post or two already over there so if you guys want to check that out and follow me there there's the link down in the description down below for you guys and let's dive in all right we are here in Photoshop on my iPad again the 10.2 inch uh, seventh generation iPad and the first generation Apple pencil so I'm going to show you guys how to do clipping mask effects on the iPad in Photoshop on the desktop. It's pretty simple, but on here it's a little bit different. I have this one already created. Let me just hide that docket for you and hide that docket for you. There we go. Now this piece I already have completed. It was for a thumbnail to this video. So if you guys want to check that out on my second channel, go right ahead. Um, this was a little trip to a nature garden that I went to when I was in Georgia last month. Was that last month? I think it was last month. So, um, I uh, guys, I don't pay attention to the passage of time. So, let's see. As you can see here, I have a text of the word floral, and then I have clip masked. Whoops. <laughs> I have clip masked a whole bunch of photos of flowers inside of this text. So let me go ahead and open the layers panel for you here, which is over here on the right hand corner. And you can see a whole bunch of layers. Now I'm going to take you through this entire process of how to create this. First off, let's get a new artboard here. I'm going to extend the artboard here and to do that I'm going to choose the crop tool over here on the left and I'm just going to pull down one side here to about there and that way it visually looks like there's two. Also, well, just a little bit more than two. There we go. The, gr the grid here will help you to get that all set up. Press done and now we have twice the artboard here. Now for the Let's open the layers panel. For the font that I used, I don't think it kept the font. It did not, right, because I clip masked it. So, let me hide those dockets. By the way, for I call them dockets or panels. Uh, they're the same thing. Uh, if you tap on the icon and then tap it again, it shows and hides. Let's see, let's choose a new layer. So I'm gonna open the layers panel here, go up to the top one. Okay, I'm going to add a new layer, there we go, and then with this layer, I'm going to select the text icon over here, and I'm just going to tap on the artboard anywhere, and we're going to do, um, let's just choose, let, we'll do the same thing, floral. There we go. I'm going to hide the keyboard by just tapping the keyboard icon there, and let's move over here. Now, when you have your text, okay, so this is, I think this is the same text. Now, when you have your text already set here, I'm just gonna mm, double tap it. I forgot that you have to do the um, uppercase and lowercase yourself. So, if you double tap on the shift arrow on the, key, on the on screen keyboard, it stays in uh, uppercase mode for you. There we go. Hide the keyboard icon there. And then for this one, I'm going to change the font size. Wait, do I even need that? No, okay. Change the font size to something pretty large. Like 142. I think 140. Maybe it was 140. There we go. Now, as you can see, this font is completely different than this font 
so far. We have to do a few adjustments to it first. So um, if you've never worked with text in Photoshop before, this is kind of like a little bit of a crash course. But I have the font chosen of Galgi. A Galgi I really like because everything seems very uniform and the spacing, the spacing is pretty spot on between each letter. All right, so now that we have this, I'm gonna change the color of it, go away. I'm gonna change the color of it to white. There we go. So it's still text layer. And then in the properties panel, since we're doing all of this in the properties panel, in the properties panel, uh, as soon as you put any text on the artboard, the properties panel automatically opens up for you. So the properties panel is these sliders here. It's the third icon. We want to keep everything else the same. I have Galgi um, text. You, um, if you don't have Galgi, Galgi text, you can use any kind of sans serif font that you want. Um, I just have Galvagy because I downloaded it from CC Libraries, but you can use like Myriad, Minion, whatever. And I have it emboldened, and I have the font size of 140. Now I'm not going to mess with the tracking or the kerning or the letting. So that's going to all stay the same. From here, I'm going to open up the Layers panel. I'm going to tap on the text layer. Okay, so I'm in the text layer here, and then what I want to do is I want to transform it. So there is a transform tool right over here in the left toolbar. It ha it's right under the selection tool, so I'm gonna select that. And then a side menu pops up of options. Now I want to skew this, so I'm gonna choose skew. And then if you tap and drag on any one of these little dots here, it'll skew it for you. I'm gonna try and get this as similar as possible. There we go. Oh, right. But it still maintains its text classification. So I'm going to tap into here. Go away, keyboard. Gosh, that keyboard keeps popping up. All right, so I'm going to tap into there. And now I realize that I did do some tracking and kerning on this. So I'm just going to pull the slider until it looks about the same. I also did not have the font size that large. There we go. I'm just pulling it, I'm just pulling the sliders into place. So 133 and 75 looks about right. I'm gonna press done. Ah, I see, I did make it a bit bigger. All right, so let's make it whoop, slightly bigger. All right, about 143 and then the tracking I have is at 94. Okay, now with this, I'm gonna move this down here. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to add some photos. The photos that I am going to choose for this, um, if you don't know how to import photos, they make it very, very simple. To import photos into Photoshop to work on this, we're going to create a new layer. So you tap on the layers panel here, press in this plus icon here and choose new layer. And then we're going to choose our photos and put them on their own separate layers. So the, there is an import options icon over here underneath the text icon. And you can import from photos, files, libraries, or take a picture with the camera to import. But I already have my photos, so I'm going to choose photo. You can choose whatever photo you want for this. Um, you don't have to use the word floral. You can apply the exact same concepts that I'm doing here and the exact same techniques to whatever um, word and whatever photos that you already have. I'm going to choose, which one was it? It was this one. Now, this is going to be individual, so they are going to do it individually. I'm gonna resize this as well. Okay, so now that we have this photo in place for now, we're going to tap on our layers icon here, and we're going to choose this little icon down here, which is clipping mask. So what this does is it clips it to wherever the photo is and what it does is it hides it behind. So this is now behind all the letters. You can move it across all of them, but we want it only concentrated on the F here. So as you can see, some of it went over into the L. 
So we're going to choose our eraser tool and I'm just going to erase that little section there because we don't need it. And that is the first clip mask photo that we have created. Look at that. Let's just zoom in for you here. There we go. And it looks very similar to the first one. <laughs> you can keep moving it around if you want to. And then the next one, we're going to add a new layer in the layers panel. There we go. And as you can see, it does not carry over the same action as the layer below. We're going to continue to do that for every single one of these. If it's helpful for you guys, I'm just going to keep the layers docket open. That way you can see what's going on. Um, I know I like to hide it just so I can have like a clear workspace, but I'm going to keep it open for you guys. I'm going to import photo. And I think the other photo I chose was this one. And I think with this one, I went across two. So I think what I did was I resized it. What the hey is going on with this? And I did it across two. Guys, I don't know what in the world is happening with Photoshop right now, but it's doing some weird stuff. Okay, so you can transform this however you want. You can pull this to change the angle, this little, here, this little thing here. And you can tap and push in any corner or drag out to resize the constrained size of it. If you want it to be unconstrained and you really want to mess with the proportions, you just press and hold this touch selector over here. I know it might be difficult for you guys to see, but there is one here. Press and hold and then tap and push in or drag out a corner and it will unconstrain the proportions. Because the great thing about Photoshop is that it automatically constrains the proportions of whatever photo or image you are transforming, which is great, usually. All right. I'm done, so click done at the top. And let's do that same process again. We're on that layer. Let's just press this icon here, and it clip masks it to the L and the O. Now we can still move it. I'm going to choose my selector. We can still move it into the correct spot. There we go, something like that. Now it did come over here onto the F, so I'm just gonna choose my eraser tool. I'm just gonna erase it away. It's the great thing about Photoshop is that it turns everything into pixels, so you can just erase it. There we go. Easy peasy. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the next two letters, R and A. And I think this one was a hydrangea, so I'm gonna choose a new layer over here, this plus sign, tap that, new layer, and then we're going to do the same process over and over and over until we get what we're looking for. I think it was this photo I chose. What do you guys think of my photos, by the way? We went to this nature garden in Georgia, and it was really quite beautiful. It was in Atlanta. I really enjoyed the experience. It was really quite fun. It was a nice day. It wasn't super hot. And it was just a really nice, like, chill day. We got to see a lot of beautiful flowers. All right, I think that's about where I want it. So I'm going to click done or tap done. I keep saying click. I'm so used to working on, like, a computer that I keep saying click. It's just in there. All right. And then again, we're going to go over here to the right toolbar, and we're going to tap on this page with a down arrow. And it is not exactly in the right place. We were so close. I'm just going to move it slightly like so. That is very, very close. I'm going to choose my eraser tool just to erase what is over here on the O. There we go. And there is that. Now I can go back over here and switch it around if I want to. However, I don't really feel the need to. So last one is the L and that's a completely different photo. I'm going to choose the plus sign over here to create a new layer. Once again, new layer. Tap the import options icon over here, which looks like a landscape photo. Photo. I'm going to choose this photo because this is the one it was. I'm just going to go over here. Resize it. Photoshop makes it super easy to resize, by the way. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it's so easy. Tap done. There we go, and then we're going to choose this icon once again, and it can it hides it behind the L, and I'm just going to move it into the position that it was in here. 
let's see, it looks to be about mm, there. Now I'm going to choose my eraser tool because it did come over onto the A and I don't want that. So I'm just going to erase it away, just like so. I can also increase the brush size of my eraser to make this a lot easier on myself. There we go. And that is how you do clipping masks in Photoshop, especially for the iPad. Now I am going to go back to this O. That's the one, yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this portion just like so. If you don't know how to do that, there is a lasso tool to make your own selections, like your own custom selections. And um, I just drew around the O and it created this like moving snake dash line around here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform it. So I'm going to tap on this transform tool. And then I'm just going to move it all the way around to about so. There we go. Done. And then don't forget to hit deselect. So there you have it. That is, I'm going to hide the docket over here. That is how you clip mask photos to text in Photoshop. It's very, very simple, guys. Go ahead and play around with it and try it out for yourself. You don't have to use like the exact same things that I used. You can really like take this as far as you want it just to explore. Remember, if you ever mess up or if you think you mess up, there's always these arrows, this undo arrow and this redo arrow up here that you can always tap on and you can always go back and redo what you messed up if you think you messed up. I hope this helps you guys to create your own clip mask creations. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And check out my Patreon. It'll really help me out. And I will see you soon, creators.